Right, we've now got ceilings, we've got power. It's feeling a bit warm in here, finally. It's about time we fit a kitchen. So this kitchen that's been kind of hanging around in the background of all the videos lately uh, is finally ready to be unwrapped and fit. So I'm going to start in this corner because I think it makes sense to start in the corner and then we can just work, it's a basically an L-shaped kitchen or a U-shaped kitchen because it comes out as a breakfast bar unit. I'm going to get the level set up, hopefully that laser will be a good way to go and then we can start getting them in. completely pre-assembled, which is a bit of a cheat, but it's also reassuring and it's quite nice that it's done that way. Let's see if we find out. Pretty much spot on the laser, so we're at the right height. This one's just got so many legs, it took a bit of adjusting. Because I know where our battens are along here, I can see which ones tie in with the battens and just go straight to that. We haven't got any wall units, so for these ones, I think that'll be adequate. And I can even go through into the OSB as well. So I've got a little flexible right angle Germany what's it to put in there. I won't say that's the most difficult one uh, because I'll shoot myself in the foot, but it is the datum that everything's gonna be off. So we wanna get that one right. Next unit to go in is one of the big drawer units. So with the first unit in place, the next job was to start working along the main wall and all these are drawer units. Now all of these cabinets come fully assembled, hardware's on them, everything but the feet themselves and the handles. So the feet slot, slot in to the plates that are already installed on the bottom and then once you've got the cabinets lined up, you can plumb everything up and using the supplied screws, which are a cabinet clamping screw, have a female and a male part. They're secured together, top and bottom in the fronts. And because this is a cabin that will likely be moved in the future, I'm also putting a couple of screws into each of the feet down into our subfloor. Many of you who are mid-renovation or doing a build of some sort may have come across this company. It's called DIY Kitchens and it's a fully automated line. I think they're based in Yorkshire and it's a really nice user interface on their website. I found them pretty helpful and I'll do a bit of a follow-up video in the future on costs and what we've learned through using them. But nothing of this is a sponsored gig so we just got the full price and whatever that was we'll share with you. Uh, it seemed reasonable and it was a, uh, equivalent to going into store and getting a, a normal DIY brand um, kitchen off the shelf or even having one made to order. So this was all bespoke and we were able to configure things and use cabinets that we hadn't actually seen available in other suppliers.
Right, it's delivery day. Well, it's movement of delivery day. We've just been up, collected all the bits. Now we've been frugal or sensible here. How much we doing? Sensible and frugal, and we bought some reconditioned units or X demo units. We're getting all these appliances out, so we decided on just refurbished appliances. These are often X demo or ones that are slightly damaged packaging or things like that, and they normally grade them. It was just a little dink on the side here. Everything else is absolutely fine, so really pleased with that one. I think it saved us, I don't know, a hundred pounds, something like that. The oven, again, a fairly minor issue. It's just this bottom part has been bent under. I don't think any of that's visible. If it is, we can bend it back. Uh, it's just what sits over the unit below. Here's the unit here. So I'm guessing once this unit's squared up, that's gonna sit there. And that's what it shows on the diagram, which just means that the oven is sat on the bottom shelf, which hopefully is what it's meant to be doing. Completely forgot, haven't told you the biggest fail, which is this one which also came from, I think it was Appliances Direct. And uh, again, a reconditioned unit, A1, it said, which basically means it's been reboxed. This one is not A1. So we were expecting a scratch on the side panel, which is what I think the photo showed. But I mean, this has got some like crazy heavy scratching on the door handles, which if I could get a pair of handles for 50 quid would still be worth it, because I think this is 400 pounds off. However, there's a dent in here on the door, which is just, rubbish and this it's not just a cosmetic which is how it's advertised this one has been dropped onto its front or hit and it's broken and sheared that off and uh, well it's a bit more than a cosmetic damage I would say but I think Joe's been pretty persuasive in the emails and I think they've agreed to come back they could say you can keep it and have a 50 quid voucher uh, no thank you so they're gonna take it back uh, we did buy all the other stuff from them and I, if there was another one that was actually A1, we would have taken it. However, I couldn't see one there and I found another one locally, Facebook Marketplace, which is way better condition than this. It's only a year old, so, and it's half the price. So I'm gonna send this one back. You know, you win some, you lose some, but it's not gonna slow us down. The next day, Craig was over and he gave me a hand doing a few jobs, which would have been a struggle on my own. So first job was to get out the track saw and dig out all the stuff which I hadn't really used since we moved house and that enabled me to make some more accurate cuts and use up sections of this end panel that I'll be able to recycle and repurpose elsewhere. What I've done is taken out a little section here uh, just to try and make an efficient use of this material. These end panels are extremely expensive for what they are. Obviously they're finished nicely to match all the units and they're colour matched properly but they're several hundred pounds they all add up to. Um, so in the end, we only got this big one and a couple of small slithers. The rest I'm just gonna paint and color match myself. So what I've done is cut this section out, hoping that I can use this piece with its good sort of round pencil edge on it somewhere else, probably in the utility to trim out next to the washing machine, because uh, this is completely invisible. So the rest of this is fine. Now I've got to shorten the, the width a bit and also take the bottom off. Also, unlike some end panels that you carry all the way down to the floor and then your plinth butts into it, because we haven't got any other end panels around the kitchen, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna cut them so it's flush with the bottom of the cabinet. That way our plinth will carry on and be mitered around that corner unit. So the oven housing is the one that I decided we would use an end panel just because I wanted that sort of framing we're using the blue paint, I guess, the framing of that integrated unit. Everywhere else I'll be using up what I've got or the offcuts of plinths just to trim out where needed. We've got an American fridge freezer going in here, so there is a little bit of trim to either side of that that I'll put in just to aesthetically make things look a bit better. To the left of this pantry or larder unit is where that fridge freezer will go. And I'll be putting some heavy duty anchors into the wall here to fix these units. Because remember, when you start pulling out a fully laden uh, larder unit like that, there's quite a lot of weight pulling on the wall. So I've intentionally fit some studs and noggins in the places where I know I'll need them. Next job was to cut down a couple of the units. We've got a breakfast bar uh, coming out from the wall, which is made up of regular base units and a wall unit on feet. And in order to use a 900 millimeter wide breakfast bar worktop, we needed to cut off these little legs that come off the back. Um, they 
the projection of that carcass is just to kind of give you that space at the back for wiring and scribing to walls. We didn't need that, so we've been able to do flush back to back on the cabinets and that means things add up. And then finally, before we can turn the corner into the breakfast bar, we need to create this L section. Now it's quite well detailed in the manual that came with the kitchen, but we needed to make that suit. And ideally, I think they suggest bringing the corner unit away from the wall, 130 millimeters. And if you do that, then you need a 70 millimeter by 70 millimeter L section created from some of the trim that they sent. So I went ahead and pilot drilled those, screwed them together, and then realized that actually I had a bare edge showing against the door. So I decided to remake that. The next thing I had to do is cut the blank panel down to accommodate that L section. So once that was cut, it could be fit back onto the unit and then I can get on and do the L section properly. Now I realized my cut was too rough the first time around, so I decided to score it just by half a millimeter or so with the blade. It's a good blade in here as well and then do a full depth cut. And that made all the difference. You can see here the first attempt, even through the plastic film that comes on the board material, which when placed against the adjacent piece, just you can see those chips, it's not great. So I recut it nice and smooth, but you can see here, I just ran a Sharpie along the cut edge as well, just to make sure everything was nice and dark. It's gonna be a shadow gap anyway there. And I'll probably, probably run a really fine bead of clear silicon up there just to make sure any spillages don't get into that and swell it but now the exposed joins on that a nicely finished blue pencil edge against the doors. And the next day I fit some timber blocking in there to make sure everything was nice and secure and that that gap was perfect for the door to close. Well, there we go. That is stage one of the kitchen complete or almost complete. Next job will be appliances and then moving on to worktops and all the trim. Anyway, first up, we've got to finish that flooring. Huge thank you to Speedy Tool Hire for sponsoring our cabin videos and also to our regular supporters over on Patreon. We'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time.